again, they'll raise your hand and uh, we'll get the remote mic to you. So, hands up. Hey, I was wondering if. Yeah, how are you? Good. Good. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> Zion, uh, think back to your first experience playing in the Georgia Florida game. Uh, what stood out? What kind of surprised you? Uh, shoot, the week before. Jordan and uh, Julian going down. I still remember that week vividly. Um, I was at home watching the game. I see those two go down. And I know the next week coming up, we have uh, the week the week after the bye week. Uh, we have Florida coming in, so I know I had to step up. Uh, that was a big game for me. Zion, what was the focus for the defensive line during the bye week, and, and how productive do you feel like that bye week was for you guys? Uh, just put them, keep putting them in front of uh, the next one. Just get, keep getting better at us uh, as a team, really. I wouldn't even just say it was a D line. Just uh, getting better over the bye week, not letting uh, the days go by, not working. Hey, Zion, uh, can I get some of your thoughts on Anthony Richardson and then what kind of stood out to you on film when you were watching? Uh, he's a physical runner. Uh, you know, at 6'3, 2, 230, 235, whatever he is, uh, he, he loves the stiff arm. Uh, he loves to make guys, make guys look silly on film. So. Uh, we got to rally to him and uh, put a hat on. You guys have obviously been very productive on the defensive side of the ball. We're constantly asking about Jalen. Is he going to be well? Is he going to be well? Obviously, we don't know going into this game. But is part of that almost uh, annoying to you because you guys are obviously you and, and, and Stackhouse and are doing a good job inside. What's the feeling on that? Um, you know, we we love to have Jalen back. Uh, we know it's gonna take some time for him to uh, finally get uh, get back to 100% like he wants to be. But uh, I think it's uh, we keep we're still keeping that next man up mentality. Uh, not gonna let just one guy uh, hold our hold us back. We're gonna keep going and uh, we're playing for him. Yes, I know. It's following up on Anthony Richardson. It seems like every week y'all are facing one of these quarterbacks that can extend plays and scramble and everything. How much better do you think y'all have gotten at that from you know the start of the season now preparing for both next up to now? Um, Really taking each week and uh, kind of just uh, honing in on what we got to do to stop him. Um, you know, we got to keep him in a uh, keep him in a rut, keep him in a cage, uh, try to drop him on the left side. Um, we know he, he wants to get to his right, so just just doing little things like that, just keep him in, keep him in the pocket and uh, let let our guys cover. Kirby had just said that. You probably why the defense has improved over the course of the season. You guys still haven't played your best football. What do you think you guys as a unit have to do to get to a point where you are playing your best football in the season? Just keep believing in each other. Uh, not letting one, one thought get us uh, out of our comfort zone. Just keep playing uh, because of uh, Georgia football. Like we know how we can. How we can. We've seen uh, Michael come on, you know, and, and play these uh, you know, his freshman season. Just what kind of development have you seen in him, and, and how much confidence do you have in him? I have confidence in my kill. Uh, just from from the spring, well, from the spring and from the uh, summer, uh, I knew what kind of work uh, the he had. Uh, he's a guy that going to come in, keep his nose, keep his nose clean, and keep his uh, head down, and keep working. Um, just throughout the season, you you see uh, pro get uh, progressively better. Uh, his pass rush, uh, even him striking a four uh, in regular downs uh, first and second down, uh, he's gotten a lot better at that. So uh, when he when he's playing at his uh, best potential, he's very he's very good. Zion by the number. I feel like up until now we haven't really been tested as a as a defense as a, outside of the Missouri game, um, play, as well playing a fourth quarter game. So I think that's going to be a big thing for us in the second half of the season because we know we got some big uh, big opponents coming in. Uh, we're traveling as a big opponent, so we just got to uh, hone in on Georgia football and keep playing. So how would you describe Trey Scott's leadership style? What separates him from other defensive line coaches you've been around? Uh, so he's going to keep it real. For, Time you walk in the doors at the time you leave a uh, football field from the, at the end of the day. Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if your effort's sucky, if you're, if you're tired, if you're looking winded, he's going to tell you. And if you're doing really good, he's going to tell you as well. So I think it's just uh, the fact that he's going to keep it real with you at all times. I think that's what, kind of, I think that's what makes him a uh, great coach. Hey, you've been playing a lot on uh, special teams, especially field goal and uh, PAT. Yeah. How have you impressed that role this year? Uh, really just going back to doing whatever I can for my team. Uh, I know JD uh, had that position last year. 
He was a, he was a big wall. Uh, you know, we need every point we can get when it comes to field goal, PATs, when it comes down to uh, thicker games. So, and I, and I love to be that guy that they turn to and look to uh, to, uh, to pick up that block. Yeah, I guess uh, you're on an extra point. When Pod is out there, you have to change your jersey really quickly. Have you gotten good at that? How how has that process gone? From getting in and out of that number quickly, and you know, how did you how did you learn to sort of get to that point? Where you're like, all right, I gotta go change my jersey, and then run out there on the field and change it and come back off. Shoot. Um, so that's throughout the down. I mean, throughout the drive on um, offense, whatever whichever way we're going, I try to stay down towards the that side of the uh, sideline. If I see a big run, I know I got to find the two guys, get it on, uh, <laughs> coming off. It's, it's a hassle coming off. They have to cut the sides a little bit so I can get my arms in and out. But it's it's fun. Uh, I love doing it for my team. So I would change for the world. Don, is there anything you tell some of the younger guys, maybe the, the true freshmen or, or guys who haven't played in this Florida game as far as what to expect? Uh, Coach Mark, he says it all the time. Uh, he said it a lot this week. When you go out for warm-ups, there's not going to be a lot of people in the stands. It's like, like a regular home or away game. You got to uh, bring your own energy. But when you come out for kickoff, uh, it's coin toss. It's going to be half blue, half blue and orange, half blue, uh, red and black. And you got to be ready to go by the time you go back in for that uh, the meeting for the game. So just having, that, having the guys locked in and knowing their assignment, knowing where they got to be. Don, there's a uh... – here in the University of Georgia, there's, there's so many unique rivalry games with Tech and State, Auburn's such an old rivalry, Florida. What what makes Florida a, such a special rivalry game? Um, I think because we have a lot of guys that actually come from Florida that, that come play in Georgia. So I think they try to, they try to uh, have this to be their best week because they know they're playing a lot of guys that they play in Pop Warner, middle school, high school maybe. So I think that, that's what kind of brings a different atmosphere to the game. What do you remember about that 2020 game? Obviously, y'all, the other result wasn't in your favor, but I think you had a couple of hard hits where you knocked a guy kind of senseless. Do you kind of remember those that series of plays? Uh, yeah, I do. Because uh, Damian Pierce, he had just scored on the, I think it was on like the three or four yard line, and I kind of got, I kind of got mowed over. And Coach Scott, he actually told me, he was like, I don't know if I'm gonna put you back in, but the next drive starts. He throws me back out there, uh, make the play on second down. Uh, we got a uh, pick six from Stokes the next play. So it was a big uh, momentum change at the time, but it was a it was a great uh, conference boost for me. So it looks like Tennessee was on your final list of uh, you know finalists when we picked Georgia. Well, how involved were you with them in the recruiting process? And um, you know, was your home state uh, not that very much? Uh, I love my home state school, but there's was, was a lot of different coaches there at the time. Um, uh, I love it out here now in Georgia, but it was, I just didn't feel like it was home for me. Uh, I didn't really get recruited well, and I, I can't really blame it on the coaches there now, but, you know, it was the best decision for me at the time. Any other questions? All right.